cookie swirl? See? <laughs> Welcome to anatomy class, students. Today, we're gonna be learning about one of the most important muscles in your body. You're talking about your teeth, right? You need your teeth in order to eat. Uh, no, your teeth are not a muscle, but they are attached to your jaw, which does have muscles, which helps you chew. No, no, today we're gonna be talking about the heart. Ooh, not only are we gonna be talking about it and learning about it, but we are gonna make our own giant heart. Chocolatey chippy cookies, what is scientist Barbie talking about? Oh, oh, whoa! Oh, we're not just gonna be making a giant heart, we're gonna be making a life-size heart. Okay, this is the disgusting anatomy heart where you can actually make your very own heart. We've got a mold that's right here in here and I cannot wait to fill this up and make a heart. And be able to hold it in my own hands. Whoa, your heart is gonna be in your hands. Whoa, look at how juicy and red and veiny it is. Whoa! Scientific explorer! All right, let's get started with this disgusting anatomy heart. Oh, oh. All right, here is the mold that we're gonna be using to create this heart. It's just a clear mold, but you can see basically how we're gonna get it to try to look. Oh, and it even comes with a bonus mold to make an eyeball too, whoa. So this kit comes with cornstarch, some food coloring dyes, some little stirry sticks, a paintbrush, ooh, and some gelatin mix. All right, so let's go ahead now and take this heart and mix up all the ingredients we need to make a super, super squishy, squishy gelatin heart. To the kitchen lab. Three cups of water. Now three tablespoons of the gelatin mix. Ah! Now we got half a cup of cornstarch. Oh, and pour it on in. And mix. All right, here's the heart mold. Now we're gonna pour the mixture into the heart. So I have it leveled here on this little giant cupcake bowl. Add a little bit of some oil in. Whoops. Mix it around. Mix it with my hand to make sure. Here we go. Little gelatin does not stick to the mold. Perfect, looks good. Let's go ahead and get that heart made. Ooh, it looks like it's starting to gel already. Ooh. Here we go. There we go. Make sure it gets into all the little crevices of the little heart mold. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna put the heart in the refrigerator and let it totally, totally, totally get nice and hard overnight. All right, students, it looks like the heart is completely ready. Ew, gross. Ew, what is that? All right, the heart now is all, all, all completely gelled. Ah, I poked it. Now it's actually time to get it out of this heart mold. So I'm going to carefully, carefully, carefully peel it from the mold and flip it upside down and hopefully it will just come right jelly out. Ew, ew, ew. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Is it ready? Big jelly. Ew. Come on out, heart. Ew. Ah, no, it's breaking. Careful, careful, careful. I don't want it to break. Come on out. Ew, it's so squiggly, iggly, and jiggly. Ew, there we go. Easy. It's almost out of the mold. Ugh. Ew. Oh, no, it totally did that great. It's definitely still stuck in the mold. No. Ooh. Yeah, we can definitely work with this. So now the heart just needs to be painted. Kind of looks like a frozen heart or something. A frozen heart? Huh. I guess I can kind of see that, but that's just entirely not possible. Oh, yes, it is. Whoa, Princess Anna from Frozen. What does she know about a frozen heart? I know everything about a frozen heart. Unfortunately, my sister froze me. <gasps> no, no, it's okay, it's okay. An act of true love actually broke the spell and I'm perfectly fine now. But I do imagine that this was 
what my heart was like whenever it was frozen. Well, let's completely unthaw the heart and get it painted so it looks realistic. Okay, we're gonna totally, totally add color to this heart, which is just so ugh, gloopy, gloopy, gloopy. I cannot even believe it. Ugh. All right, I'm gonna grab a little tiny bowl. Now this set did come with some coloring. So I'm just gonna open up the red and I'm gonna add some water into a bowl and mix in the red coloring. Whoop. Ooh, it's a lot of coloring. Ooh, one more drop. There we go. Get out the little paintbrush that it comes with. I'm gonna mix the dye together in the water. There we go. So now we've got like a red, red, red muscle color. And now we're gonna start painting the heart to make it realistic. Ooh, it's kind of hard to paint it. Maybe I should add the color directly to it. Make it a little bit easier to paint. There we go. Make this a red, red, red beating heart. Ugh, it's so chunky in some places. Add some red dye to this area. This is where the arteries would be on the left side of the heart. Whoop. Ooh, so chunky. Maybe I can pour a little bit on. Ooh, careful. It's really hard to color in this heart. Yeah, I don't know if it's actually looking like its picture right here. So let's try to add in some of these arteries in. I'm gonna mix some blue right here. Does this look about right? The superior vena cava. Once blood flows from your head, neck, upper limbs, and chest, it goes right through here and enters the first part of the heart, this area right here and here, which is called your right atrium. Then the blood goes down into this area, which is your right ventricle. Is this the pot where the oxygen comes in? Yes, very, very soon. So once the blood hangs out here in the right ventricle, it gets squeezed and pushed into this area, which we're kind of missing ugh, because it was a little bit of a fail ugh, in the mold, but it will go into the pulmonary trunk where then the blood will then go to the lungs to pick up oxygen. So let's see if we can color in the pulmonary trunk. It's a little bit hard to tell again because it got totally, totally failed. But we'll color in the trunk a little bit here. Ah, no, it doesn't look blue anymore. Now it looks black or like a deep, deep purple. No. So that blood is now going off into the lungs to get oxygen. Oh, I get it now. So now that the blood has oxygen from being in the lungs, now it's gonna be pumped into the rest of the body. Yep, you got it, Cleo. So blood is gonna travel back from the lungs and go now into the left atrium, then go into the left ventricle and get a really big push. So that oxygen rich blood that's inside of the left ventricle will get squeezed and pushed by the heart and out through the aortic arch. And that is how blood gets to the rest of the body that now has oxygen. <laughs> yep, that's right, Gulia. The aortic arch is very important. So let's go ahead and color one in. All right, let's open up the green food coloring and kind of create an aortic arch that would be right here. Ah! Green. Kind of paint that green right on. You know what I mean? Know what I mean? Oh, the heart is kind of deteriorating. Ah, I broke the heart in half. I broke a piece of the heart off. Oh no, keep it together. Okay, you can definitely see the aortic arch better, way better right on here on the mold, but unfortunately it did not come out of the mold. Now, of course, now that this heart is unthawed, the heart needs a way to supply nutrients and blood to itself. So it has its own system of arteries and veins on it. So we'll color in a right coronary, ah, dripped all over coronary artery. This is a big, big, big artery that supplies blood to the heart. Do, do, do. If it didn't have this, the heart would not be able to function. And, and one on the other side of the heart. Do, 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 now the heart can function. Very good students, I'm very, very proud of you. Now, just to recap how blood flows through the heart, blood flows in from the top portion of your body through the superior vena cava, and from the lower portion of your body through the inferior vena cava into the right atrium, then it goes into the right ventricle with a big squeeze of the heart. Whoop, it goes right here to the pulmonary trunk where one side takes it to one side of your lungs and one side takes it to the other side. This is where all the oxygen gets picked up in the lungs and then it heads right back to the heart to go to the rest of the body. 
Yep, that's right, Gulia. So the blood comes right back from the lungs into the left atrium, goes into the left ventricle for a really big squeeze. This is where the heart gets its power. Right here, you can see how thick this muscle is. Squeezes it and up the blood goes through the aortic arch. These arteries from the top of the arch bring that blood to your head and your arms and your chest, or it can go even lower to the lower part of your body. Uh, what happens when the blood's ready to come back to the heart? You know, once it's been all through the body and all? I know. It travels back through the vena cava and right back to the heart and goes right through the different chambers of the heart all over again. Yep, and blood that is low on oxygen starts right back at the right atrium again and goes through the whole cycle again and again and again. And blood is being moved through your body even right now as we're talking in this exact same way. Woohoo! All right, chocolatey chippy cookies. I hope you had fun learning about the heart with this disgusting anatomy kit. I cannot believe I actually made this heart. Ew, I mean, it's just so super duper squishy. And I mean, it definitely is kind of a fail since it fell apart and everything. Ah! Oh, it's falling apart right now. Oh no, no, my human heart, no! Don't fall apart on me, no! Excuse me, scientist Barbie, can we please make the eyeball next? Well, I guess I'll see you in part two. Bye, smart cookies. today's students. Awesome job in class. I just have a quick question. How well were you paying attention to the human heart? What part of the heart receives blood that is low in oxygen first? The left ventricle, the right ventricle, the right atrium, or the left atrium? Oh, I know. I know. I know. Pick me. Pick me. Bye, cookie fans.